lesson on mirrors. The law of reflection. When a wave reflects, its direction changes, or velocity since that is speed and direction together. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. When we take an incident ray towards a reflecting surface, it reflects off at the same angle. Well, how do we measure those angles? Well, we need to draw on what's called a normal line that is perpendicular to the reflecting surface. Hence, the angle of incidence is measured from the incident ray to that normal line, and the angle of reflection is measured from the reflected ray to the normal line. For convex and concave curved mirrors, recall in class we needed to draw a tangent line first to then draw in the normal line perpendicular to, and we can measure those angles of incidence and reflection as well. Images produced by curved mirrors. Here we see Sheldon looking at his image formed by a concave mirror when he's standing very far away. You can see that he's upside down and a little bit smaller. Whereas when he comes very close to the concave mirror, his image becomes much larger and upright. If he stands far away from a convex mirror, we see his image is smaller but now upright. So how do these mirrors form these different types of images? Well, they're obeying the law of reflection. In class, you constructed ray diagrams to determine locations of images formed by both concave and convex mirrors. Here are the three rules for ray diagrams. Please be sure to pause the video to write down these rules in your notebook for reference during class. Rule one, an incident ray from the object parallel to the principal axis reflects through the focus. Rule two, an incident ray from the object through the focus reflects parallel to the principal axis. Rule three, an incident ray from the object through the center reflects back through the center. Types of images produced by mirrors. The first type of image is called a real image. This is produced where light rays really converge. Real images are always inverted with respect to the object and they may be larger or smaller than the object depending on how far away the object is from the mirror relative to the center and focus. The second type of image is a virtual image. These images are produced where light rays appear to converge but don't really. Virtual images are always upright with respect to the object and they also may be larger or smaller than the object depending on how close the object is to the mirror. Let's observe these types of images through some ray diagrams. Let's sketch a ray diagram for an object beyond the focus of a concave mirror. Let's follow the three rules as you wrote down in your notebook. Rule number one is a light ray that's parallel to the principal axis will reflect through the focus. Rule two is a light ray from the top of the object through the focus reflects parallel to the principal axis. Rule three is a ray from the object through the center reflects right back along itself through the center. Now if you notice, the images are formed where these reflected rays meet. So let's sketch in Sheldon's real image. Here we can see that Sheldon is inverted and smaller and is a real image because these are where light rays really do converge. Now Sheldon has moved inside the focus of the concave mirror. Let's follow those three rules for ray, ray diagrams again to find his image. Rule number one is a light ray that is parallel to the principal axis will reflect through the focus. Rule two is a ray through the focus. Well, here we have to take it actually from the direction of the focus from his head to the mirror. This ray will reflect parallel to the principal axis. The third rule would be a ray from the direction of the center and that ray will reflect back through the center. If you notice, these three rays don't converge over here on this left side. They keep getting farther and farther apart. But if we trace them back behind the mirror, 
we can find out where our virtual image is formed. So here we're going to trace one of our real rays back behind the mirror. We'll trace our other ray here back behind the mirror and our other ray back behind the mirror. Here we can see the image of Sheldon is much larger and upright with respect to the object. Since it's located where these light rays appear to converge but don't really, it is a virtual image. So, but what if we have Sheldon stand in front of a convex mirror? Well, let's follow our same three rules. First rule is a, a light ray parallel to the principal axis will reflect through the focus. Well, in this case, our light ray can't physically go through the mirror, but it can reflect away from the focus. So we'll take our ray from the direction of the focus right here. Rule two, a light ray through the focus, well, we'll aim for that focus, and we'll see that that light ray will reflect parallel to the axis. Similarly, a light ray aimed for the center of the mirror will reflect back along itself. Now again, these three reflected rays don't really meet. They keep getting further and further apart. But if we trace them behind the mirror, we can find the location of our image. Let's trace this one back behind the mirror. Let's trace this one back behind the mirror. And let's trace our red one back behind the mirror. Here we can observe that Sheldon is much smaller but upright with respect to the object. This is another case of a virtual image because we had to trace real light rays back behind the mirror, thus they don't really converge back here, but they appear to converge. The mathematics of curved mirrors. In class, when you constructed ray diagrams, you also measured the distances to the object and images as well as the focal length. That is, the distance to the object is measured from the mirror along the principal axis to the object, and we call this DO. The distance to the image would be from the mirror to where the image is, and we call that DI. And of course, the focal length is measured also along the principal axis, and we call that F. These three horizontal distances are related by the mirror equation by their inverses. Hence, 1 over DO plus 1 over DI equals 1 over F. You also measure the heights of these, hence the height of the object we called HO, and the height of the image right here is called HI. It turns out that the object and image distances compared to their heights are also related by the magnification equation. That is, HI over HO equals negative DI over DO, or as I like to say, HIHO equals negative DIDO. In order for these mathematical equations to work, we need to take into account a few sign conventions. Distances along the axis, including the focus, are negative if they're located behind the mirror. Heights are negative if they're measured below the principal axis. Being sure to use these sign conventions will make these mathematical equations work out just right to match up with your ray diagrams. Let's try an example. Let's take a look at when our object is much farther away from the mirror uh, than the center. Let's say we place our object 18 centimeters away from the mirror, that is DO is 18 centimeters. Let's say the focus of this mirror is 6 centimeters and the height of our object is 4 centimeters. Well, via our ray diagram, we can observe that the image location will be right here if we obey our three rules. But let's calculate it using the mirror equation to determine the location of DI and use the magnification equation to calculate HI. Let's set it up. So substituting in our numbers, we have 1 over 18 centimeters plus 1 over DI equals 1 over 6 centimeters. So if we rearrange this, let's get DI on the side by itself. So 1 over di, if we subtract 1 18th from both sides, that will be 1 6th minus 1 18th. If we do common denominator, we have to multiply this 
side by 3, and we'll get 3 eighteenths. Hence, 1 over di is going to equal 2 eighteenths. If we solve this for di, you can see we're going to get 9 centimeters. Let's now use the magnification equation to solve for hi, the height of the image. Well, here we have hi, what we're looking for. That object we said was 4 centimeters tall. We just calculated di to be 9 centimeters. So that's a negative di, or this will be a negative 9 centimeters. Uh, do was 18 centimeters. So you can see here, if we cross multiply, we'll have 9 times 4 is 36 and that's going to equal 18 times hi. Then solving for hi, we can see that hi will be equal to 2 centimeters. We will be practicing more ray diagram construction and mirror equations in class over the coming days. Thank you for watching and see you in class.